here was the bed that I was given when I asked to come to um, the ward. This, that was my bedside table. Um, I used to keep my study books in there that I was keeping while I was at the college. In fact, I wrote my, um, my semester exams, the first exams, my first year semester, um, I wrote and I actually got distinctions for most of my modules. Now, you can see here as well, the windows around, no burglar guards. Um, at the far end, there, there's the door that used to stay open the whole day. I kept the keys, we kept the keys. They were freely available to anyone. We just locked up at 10 o'clock, as any normal sane household would do in South Africa. Um, I, like I said, I was at the college. I walked to campus every day. I was absolutely free to do that. Nobody checked up on me. And I'd like to tell a bit, the viewers a little bit about when I came here for the first time, to the ward, to the hospital. I had a technological addiction. Now, you can gladly go and listen to my full, unaltered testimony, which is on KSP website, um, where I give a testimony of how technology destroyed my life. Now, just quickly in short, I was spending about 15 to 20 hours every day on the internet. And as is mentioned in um, Brad Huddleston's book, Digital Cocaine, we now know that multimedia, um, media multitasking combined with the internet releases negative chemicals or creates a negative chemical change in the brain which results in anxiety and depression. Now, I knew I had an addiction. I knew that I had a spiritual problem because I'd looked for help online and I had gotten received no help. So that's why I asked to come here. And I personally, out of myself, when to ask the people that we call the aunties who are co-workers, counsellors that make themselves available 24 hours, 7 days a week for anybody who's got a problem. So I asked them, please, won't you allow me to come here and to stay here and to sort my life out? So I said, there's no problem with us, but go and ask your parents. So I went to my parents and said, Mom, Dad, would you mind if I came here? I need help. I need to sort this out. I, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to self-destruct if I don't. So my parents said it's no problem for them. So I came, and I'd like to go on, to the, on record to say there were no six aunties waiting for me at the door. No one kicked and dragged me in here. Um, I wasn't forced to lie down. And in all the time that I was, I was here, I received no kind of punishment for not listening to God. I had connection with my parents. I could go home anytime I wanted to. I was absolutely free. So these allegations that have been made concerning this place, using me as a supposed witness, I'd like to say I was never contacted. I never knew that I'm supposed to be a hostage. In fact, I was in Pretoria, busy doing my practice teaching, when I found out, hang on, I'm actually supposed to be a hostage. I burst out laughing. In fact, I was laughing so much, I was afraid I'd disrupt some of the classes that were close by. It was just so ridiculous. I was never a hostage. I was never kept hostage here. It was just out of this world. But there have been further allegations which have concerned me deeply and one of it is that I confess to be a Satanist which is not true at all. I never did such a thing. And this amounts to accusing me of committing murder. And I don't know if the people who made that accusation know how this will affect my life. Because anybody who's been in contact with me will look at their life and if anything's gone wrong during that time or after that time they will put it on me and i've been in rural africa and i know the feeling against satanists and i know that they they would kill such a person so my very life is in danger because of this supposed confession which i never made and then further this aunt of mine erica borman I'd like to ask, where does she come from? 
I don't know her. I know my uncle. I know my uncle's wife. They often visit us and my gran. I know my gran. I know my dad and mom. I know my sisters. But this aunt, I, she doesn't have a part in my life for 20 years. Now, all of a sudden, she is so concerned about me and my situation. And she's never contacted me or no contact has been made with me either during the period they claimed I was a hostage or afterwards. I was never contacted to find out, are you really a hostage? Is there anything we can do to help you? Or anything like that. So now the whole country knows something about me, which I didn't even know and which is not true.